Section 8 of Beowulf. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Tad E. Beowulf by Unknown. Translated by Francis Barton Gamere. 21. Beowulf spake, Bairn of Edge Theo. Sorrow not sage, it beseems us better friends to avenge than fruitlessly mourn them. Each of us all must his end abide in the ways of the world. So when who may glory ere death, when his days are told, that is the warrior's worthiest doom. Rise, O realm warder, ride we anon, and mark the trail of the mother of Grendel. No harbor shall hide her, heed my promise, enfold of field or forestead mountain, or floor of the flood, let her flee where she will. Be thou this day endure in patience, as I ween thou wilt thy woes each one. Leaped up the greybeard, God he thanked, mighty Lord, for the man's brave words. For Hrothgar soon a horse was saddled, wave-maned steed, the sovereign wise stately rode on, his shield-armed men followed in force. The footprints led along the woodland, widely seen, a path o'er the plain, where she passed and trod the murky moor. Of men at arms she bore the bravest and best one dead, him who with Hrothgar the homestead ruled. On then went the atheling born, o'er stone cliffs steep and straight defiles, narrow passes and unknown ways, headlands sheer and the haunts of the knickers. Foremost he fared, a few at his side, of the wiser men, the ways to scan, till he found in a flash the forested hill, hanging over the hoary rock, a woeful wood, the waves below, were dyed in blood. The Danish men had sorrow of soul, and for shieldings all, for many a hero t'was hard to bear. Ill for earls, when Asherah's head they found by the flood on the foreland there. Waves were welling, the warriors saw, hot with blood, but the horn sang oft battle-song bold. The band sat down and watched on the water, worm-like things, sea-dragons strange that sounded the deep, and knickers that lay on the ledge of the nests, such as oft assay at hour of morn on the road of sails their ruthless quest, and sea-snakes and monsters, these started away, swollen and savage, that song to hear, that war-horn's blast, the warden of Gaiots with bolt from bow, then balked of life, of wave-work, one monster amid its heart, went the keen war-shaft, and water it seemed, less doughty in swimming, whom death had seized. Swift on the billows, with boar-spears well hooked and barbed, it was hard beset, done to death, and dragged on the headland, wave-roamer wondrous. Warriors viewed the grisly guest, then girt him Beowulf, and martial mail, nor mourned for his life, his breastplate broad and bright of hues, woven by hand should the waters try. Well could it ward the warrior's body, that battle should break on his breast in vain, nor harm his heart by hand of a foe. And the helmet white that his head protected was destined to dare the deeps of the flood, through wave whirlwind, t'was wound with chains decked with gold, as in days of yore the weaponsmith worked it wondrously, with swine form set it, that swords no wise, brandished in battle, could bite that helm. Nor was that the meanest of mighty helps, which Hrothgar's orator offered at need. Hunting they named the hilted sword, of old-time heirlooms easily first. Iron was its edge, and etched with poison, with battle blood hardened, nor blenched it at fight, and hero's hand who held it ever, on paths of peril prepared to go to folkstead of foes. Not first time this, it was destined to do a daring task, for he bore not in mind the bairn of Ekglaf, sturdy and strong, that speech he had made, drunk with wine, now this weapon he lent to a stouter swordsman. Himself, though, durst not under welter of waters wager his life as loyal liegeman so lost he his glory honor of earls with the other not so who girded him now for the grim encounter twenty two beowulf spake bairn of Edgetheo, have mine thou offspring of heolufna gold friend of mine now i go on this quest sovereign wise what once was said if in thy cause it came that I should lose my life, thou wouldst loyal bide to me, though fallen in father's place. Be guardian now to this group of my thanes, my warrior friends, 
if war should seize me, and the goodly gifts thou gavest me, Hrothgar, beloved, to Heolok send, Gyalot's king may ken by the gold, Hrethel's son see, when he stares at the treasure, that I got me a friend for goodness famed, and joyed while I could in my jewel bestower, and let Unferth wield the wondrous sword, earl far honored, this heirloom precious, hard of edge, with hrething I seek doom of glory, or death shall take me. After these words, the wetter Gaiot lord boldly hastened, bidding never answer at all. The ocean floods closed o'er the hero, long while of the day, long while of the day fled ere he felt the floor of the sea. Soon found the fiend, who the flood domain, sword hungry, held these hundred winters, greedy and grim, that some guest from above, some man, was raiding her monster realm. She grasped out for him with grisly claws, and the warrior seized, yet scathed she not his body hale, the breastplate hindered, as she strove to shatter the sark of war, the linked harness with loathsome hand. Then bore this brine wolf, when bottom she touched, the lord of rings to the lair she haunted, while vainly he strove, though his valor held, weapon to wield against wondrous monsters that sore beset him. Sea beasts many tried with fierce tusks to tear his mail and swarm on the stranger, but soon he marched. He was now in some hall he knew not which, where water never could work him harm, nor through the roof could reach him ever fangs of the flood. Firelight he saw, beams of a blaze that brightly shone. Then the warrior was ware of that wolf of the deep, mere wife monstrous. For mighty stroke he swung his blade, and the blow withheld not. Then sang on her head that seemly blade its war-song wild. But the warrior found the light of battle, was loath to bite to harm the heart, its hard edge failed the noble at need, yet had known of old strife hand to hand, and had helmets cloven doomed men's fighting gear. First time this for the gleaming blade that its glory fell, firm still stood nor failed in valor, heedful of high deeds, Heloch's kinsman flung away fretted sword, featly jeweled the angry earl on earth it lay, steel edged and stiff, his strength he trusted, hand gripe of might, so man shall do whenever in war he weans to earn him lasting fame, nor fears for his life. Seize then by shoulder, shrank not from combat, the guiatus war prince Grendel's mother. Flung then the fierce one, filled with wrath his deadly foe that she fell to ground. Swift on her part she paid him back, with grisly grasp and grappled with him. Spent with struggle, stumbled the warrior, fiercest of fighting men fell adown. On the hall guest she hurled herself, hent her short sword, broad and brown-edged, the bairn to avenge, the soul-born son. On his shoulder lay braided breast-mail, barring death, withstanding entrance of edge or blade. Life would have ended for Edgetheo's son under wide earth, for Earl of Gaiots, had his armor of war not aided him. Battle net hard, and holy God wielded the victor, wisest maker. The Lord of Heaven allowed his cause, and easily rose the earl erect. 23. Mid the battle gear saw he a blade triumphant, old sword of Edens, with edge of proof, warrior's heirloom, weapon unmatched, save only twas more than other men to bandy of battle could bear at all, as the giants had wrought it, ready and keen. Seize then its chain hilt the shielding's chieftain, bold and battle grim, brandished the sword, reckless of life, and so wrathfully smote, that it gripped her neck and grasped her hard, her bone rings breaking, the blade pierced through that faded one's flesh, to floor she sank, bloody the blade, he was blithe of his deed. Then blazed forth light, twas bright within, as when from the sky there shines unclouded heaven's candle. The hall he scanned, by the wall then went he, his weapon raised, high by its hilts, the Heloc thane, angry and eager. That edge was not useless to the warrior now. He wished with speed Grendel to guerdon for grim raids many, for the war he waged on western Danes. 
oftener far than an only time when of hrothgar's hearth companions he slew in slumber and deep devoured fifteen men of the folk of danes and as many others outward bore his horrible prey well paid for that the wrathful prince for now prone he saw grendel stretched there spent with war spoiled of life so scathed had left him heorot's battle the body sprang far when after death it endured the blow sword stroke savage that severed its head soon then saw the sage companions who waited with hrothgar watching the flood that the tossing waters turbid grew blood stained the mere old men together hoary haired of the hero spake the warrior would not they weaned again proud of conquest come to seek their mighty master to many it seemed the wolf of the waves had won his life the ninth hour came the noble shieldings left the headland homeward went the gold friend of men but the guests sat on stared at the surges sick in heart and wished yet weaned not their winsome lord again to see now that sword began from blood of the fight and battle droppings war blade to wane twas a wondrous thing that all of it melted as ice is wont when frosty fetters the father loosens unwinds the wave bonds wielding all seasons and times the true god he nor took from that dwelling the duke of the gaiots save only the head and that hilt withal blazoned with jewels the blade had melted burned was the bright sword her blood was so hot so poisoned the hell sprite who perished within there soon he was swimming who safe saw in combat downfall of demons up dove through the flood the clashing waters were cleansed now waste of waves where the wandering fiend her life days left and the lapsing world swam then to strand the sailor's refuge sturdy in spirit of sea booty glad of burden brave he bore with him went then to greet him and god they thanked the thane band choice of their chieftain blithe that safe and sound they could see him again soon from the hardy one helmet and honor deftly they doffed now drowsed the mere water neath welkin the war blood stained forth they fared by the footpaths thence merry at heart the highways measured well-known roads courageous men carried the head from the cliff by the sea an arduous task for all the band the firm and fight since four were needed on the shaft of slaughter strenuously to bear to the gold hall grendel's head so presently to the palace there foemen fearless fourteen gaiots marching came their master of clan mighty amid them the meadowways trod strode then within the sovereign thane fearless in fight of fame renowned hardy hero hrothgar to greet and next by the hair into hall was borne grendel's head where the henchmen were drinking an awe to clan and queen alike a monster of marvel the men looked on end of section eight